question that people often ask me is if you're interested in greater autonomy at work or even moving towards self-management, where could you start? Well, there are three possibilities that I'd like to share with you. If you're a team leader and I've got some authority to work differently within your team, there are certain practices that I believe that if you introduced could make a big difference and a shift towards greater autonomy in your team. And one of those practices is team agreements. So Brené Brown talks about clear being kind and making sure colleagues know what's okay and what's not okay in a team. So clear team agreements, a bit like ground rules that you might do at the beginning of a course, but putting into place reviews and keep iterating and getting them clearer and clearer. So we use uh, confirmation practices developed by Andy Brogan as a way of reviewing our team agreements and we review them in person-centered team reviews. So I'd get started with team agreements. The other thing I do is get really, really clear about decision-making. How are decisions made in your team? Is it by consensus? Is it role-based decision-making? Um, do you have decisions based on different roles? How do decisions get made? And how can you be clear around how power and decision-making is used within your team? And then the third thing is roles and accountability. What can you expect from each other? Now, role descriptions or job descriptions are usually things you look at the beginning of your job, but pretty much don't look again. So coming back to those and saying, what are the roles that I'm currently doing in my role, in my job, and what can people expect from me? And actually, are there metrics that relate to my role as well? And the the last thing would be what we've seen in wellbeing teams is if you change the way that meetings work. We've done a lot of work around positive and productive meetings. We now use something called tactical meetings, which is about raising and addressing tensions and looking at metrics in meetings. You can really make a huge difference. So all of those are typically things that a team manager or a team leader can put into place in their team. So that's one place to start. Another place to start is based on the work of Aaron Dignam and his book called Brave New Work. And he identifies over 70 tensions that are present in teams. They might be things like people don't do what they say they're going to do, too much email, tech gets in the way, etc. So loads and loads of very typical tensions. And what we've been doing is doing sprints with teams where we spend eight weeks. So we support a team to identify what's getting in the way of them doing their best work as a team and then identifying a practice. And some of those might be person-centered practices. Some of those might be practices you might see in uh, teams with greater autonomy. So we choose one or two practices to work on. And then we coach and support the team to put that practice in place over an eight week period. Now that might include, for example, getting data in week one, repeating the data in week seven so we can see what's changed um, and then celebrating what's been achieved. Some organisations like Making Space, uh, who are our partners in wellbeing teams, have committed to three sprints, to do three consecutive sprints with their head office teams to help them identify what kind of practices make, would make sense to roll out across the whole of the organisation, as well as, most importantly, moving the blockages or tensions that are getting in the way of people doing their best work. Choice Support and QCS are also partners of ours using these approaches, which we're really excited about. And then the third approach, uh, which Choice Support is doing alongside um, these sprints, is prototype teams. Can you identify a couple of teams that are really inspired by the idea of moving to greater autonomy? And can you work with them to put a number of practices in place and support them to test out within the organisation what it would take to have greater autonomy in teams through prototype teams. Now you might be able to see that you could start with what's possible in a team and then if several teams want to do it you might move to sprints and once you've done a couple of sprints you might see teams that are really up for moving towards greater autonomy so there is a way that these three different approaches can work together but at the moment they're my best ideas about how you could get started with greater autonomy in teams.